Okay, this is a video about absolute value inequalities. And so inequalities is where the equal sign is replaced with less than or less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. And so we had just talked about absolute value equations. And so when we have an inequality, if we are presented with something like this, um, two cases are presented just like they are with the uh, equation. And so if we have this, this will be true when this is true, either when x is less than a and x is greater than negative a um and then so when we have the less than symbol sometimes we write it like this negative a is less than x is less than a these are equivalent statements um this and this means this x is greater than negative a or x is less than a i mean and x is less than a um, if you have a greater than symbol though, an or is what goes in between these. And so this means x is greater than a or x is less than negative a. That's when this will be true and this basically is when the and will be true. These will be the two things that you'll see that we'll be working with. Okay, so we gotta deal with the difference in and and or. For these exercises, we're supposed to solve these and write the solution in interval notation and then graph these. And so here are a few examples for this. Number one, the absolute value of x plus six is less than 10. Okay, so also let me just make sure I say this. Um, these, you can, these same statements are true if there was an or equal to underneath it. So if this was or equal to, then this is what we, we'd say. If this is greater than or equal to, then this is what we'd say. So um, there's two different versions. I'm gonna be using this one because it's, it's easier. And I'm gonna be using, and this is the only version to use for that one. So this is what you'll see me do when I present it with a less than or a greater than. Okay, so for this one, um, you isolate the absolute value expression. It is isolated, there's a less than. So I go to the less than, this is the less than sign. And this is the greater than. So I go to the less than side and I follow the less than rule, which says when I remove the absolute value on uh, marks, I get two inequalities, which is, since it's less than, I start with this. A in this case is 10, so it's gonna be negative 10 is less than the expression x plus six is less than 10, which is A. Then I just solve this for x. And so when I have these three things going on here, it's kind of like a three-sided equation. I'm solving for x. To get x by itself, I'll subtract six. But I'll subtract it in the middle, on the right, and on the left. Negative 10 plus negative six is a negative 16 is less than x plus zero, which is x, is less than four. And this is the solution right here, all right? So what does that mean? That means I could graph this. How you would graph this, if this is my number line, um, green is a good color to use for this. If this is my number line, and this is, let's say this is zero, and let's say this is four, and let's say this is negative 16. Notice that this is not to scale. That's okay, I have everything marked. My solution, the x is between negative 16 and four. So my solution is gonna be between negative 16 and four. So I'm gonna use the um, parentheses, which is one of the ways, this means open circle. These are equivalent notations, two different to notations to say the same thing. So that is how I would graph it. And in interval notation, it would be negative 16 to four. That is example one. Okay, here's example two. Number two goes like this, it says, let us solve, um, well, this is similar. Let me skip that one. Let me do a greater than. How about this guy? The absolute value of 2x plus 1 over 3 is greater than 5. Okay, it came to us um, isolated. The absolute value expression is isolated on one side of the equation by itself. We say, okay, we're ready to apply the rule, but which rule do we apply? This is greater than, so I go over to the greater than side and I apply this rule, which gives me two statements. The first one's gonna be 2x plus one divided by three is greater than five, or 
2x plus 1 divided by 3 is less than the opposite of 5, less than the opposite of a. So it goes like this. If I was, how I would solve this equation is I would first kill my fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator. Times 3 times 3. 3 goes into 3 one time. I'm left with 1 times 2x plus 1 over 1, which is 2x plus 1, is greater than 5 times 3 is 15. And then I'll solve this equation for x. I'll subtract 1, and I'll get 14. I'll divide by 2, and I'll get 7. Or over here, what's happening? Well, I still need to kill my fraction. I'll multiply this side by 3 and this side by 3. 3 still goes into 3 one time. So on the left, again, I get 2x plus 1 is less than negative 15. I'm solving for x. I will subtract 1 from both sides and get 2x is less than negative 16. I'll divide both sides by 2 and I'll get x is less than negative 8. Now some of you guys might be wondering why I did not reverse the direction of the sign because there's a negative and the reason is because I did not divide or multiply by a negative I divided by a positive too. So just as a little aside right here, a little aside, if I have negative 2x is less than, is greater than or equal to 8, or 2x is greater than or equal to negative 8, or 2x is greater than or equal to, or negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Let's look at these three different statements. If I'm solving this one, I'm dividing by negative 2. That's a big deal. That's when you reverse the sign. Divide both sides by negative 2. Big deal. Um, x is going to, the direction is going to reverse. X is less than or equal to negative 4. Um, this one. I see a negative. That's not alarming. If I divide by a negative, that's a big deal. I'm not dividing by a negative. I'm dividing by a positive 2. Do not reverse the sign. X is greater than or equal to negative 4. That's how that one will be. Right here, I'm dividing by negative 2. Oh, I'm dividing by a negative, big deal. That means this guy reverses. I get x is less than or equal to 4, just as a recap of when you reverse the negative. All right, we have to graph this. So this tells me the easiest thing for me to do right here is, is um, graph each of these. So here's my number line. Okay, here is 0. Here is 7, here is negative 8. So, this is true when x is greater than 7, so that's to the right of 7. So right here, um, not equal to, so it's parentheses and to the right of 7, or less than negative 8, so it's parentheses and to the left of negative 8. So right here, because this is joined by an or, it means I keep everything that shows up highlighted on my number line. So I keep all the numbers to the left of negative 8 and all the numbers to the right of 7. So this is an appropriate graph. I'm going to make everything blue right here. This is an appropriate graph. That's good. So interval notation would be all of the blue part. So that would be from, from negative infinity. Oops, I drew an 8, sorry. From negative infinity to negative 8, not including negative 8. And the only reason it's not including is because we don't have an or equal to. If I had an or equal to, then these would be brackets like that. And this would be a bracket as well. Unioned with 7 to infinity. All right, how about another example? Real quick, let's do this one. How about if we have um, number four, the absolute value of x plus one fourth is less than or equal to three fourths. All right. Um, the absolute value um, is isolated. So that means we can go ahead and apply the rule. Which rule? Less than, go to the less than side. We apply that rule. So we set up this inequality. Um, negative a, negative 3 fourths, is less than or equal to, is less than or equal to, the expression in x, x plus 1 fourth, is less than or equal to a, 3 fourths. And we solve this inequality. 
subtract one fourth from all three places. In the middle, one fourth minus one fourth is zero. We just get x. Three fourths minus one fourth. They have a common denominator, so you can combine the numerators. Three minus one is two over four. You can simplify this fraction to one half. On the left side, we have negative three fourths minus one fourth. Common denominator, you can combine the numerators. Negative three minus one is a negative four over four or negative one. All right, how would we graph the sky? Well, like this. Hello, Henry. How are you, puppy? This is one half. This is negative one. Um, X is between negative one and one half, and at negative one, it equals that, and at one half, it equals that. Henry, by the way, is my dog. So we put a bracket on negative one because it equals that. We put a bracket on one half because it equals that, and in between here. Interval notation would be negative one, two, one half, like that. Um, let me just discuss a couple of things that could happen. You could be given an expression like this. The absolute value of 2x minus 4 is less than negative 5. The solution to this is no solution because, again, an absolute value is a distance. There's no distance that is negative 5. It's always going to be 0 or some positive number. So this is no solution. If they ask you to solve something like that, then no, not going to happen. Um, here's another example. What if they say, solve this, 7 minus x, the absolute value of 7 minus x is greater than or equal to negative 4. What if they gave you something like this? Well, let's think about this. An absolute value is a distance. When is a distance greater than or equal to negative 4? Well, the smallest a distance can ever be is 0. When something's right where it is and there's no space in between, is 0 from anything. And the biggest it could be is anything bigger than zero, but it can never be a negative four. So when, this is saying, when will the absolute value be bigger than negative four? All the time, every time, no matter what you put in for x. And so the answer here is all reals, uh, the, the uh, number line, how you would graph it, it would be the entire number line would be shaded. And interval notation would be this. So those are the different scenarios you can come across for absolute value inequalities.